Dash dash. Today, we're unwrapping something powerful, compact, and extremely significant in the world of strategic deterrence, the NASR missile. Small in size but large in impact, the NASR represents a very specific and unique chapter in South Asia's military strategy especially for tactical battlefield readiness. Let us get right into what makes this missile so important and what it represents both on a technical and geopolitical level. The NASR missile, also known by its official designation HATF-9, is a tactical ballistic missile developed by Pakistan. Its primary purpose is short-range battlefield use, with a stated range of about 70 kilometers. At first glance, that might sound limited but the purpose of the NASR ISNT about hitting long-range targets. It's about rapid deployment, fast response, and delivering a highly mobile nuclear-capable strike option in the event of conventional escalation on the battlefield. Let us unwrap the physical details first. The NASR is launched from a multi-tube launcher, typically a four-tube launcher mounted on a Chinese-origin WS Series 4X4 high-mobility vehicle. Each launcher is compact, agile, and capable of launching in quick succession. From a visual perspective, the missile is sleek, roughly 3 meters long, and is engineered for precision short-distance targeting. When it comes to propulsion, the NASR is a solid-fueled missile. This gives it a key advantage, readiness and speed. Solid fuel allows for minimal launch preparation time, which is vital during high-pressure combat scenarios. The quick response window adds to its strategic utility, enabling a state to send a message or deliver a rapid strike without delay. From a guidance perspective, while specific details are classified, it is believed to have a combination of inertial navigation and GPS-assisted systems. This ensures relatively accurate targeting within its short range. Given the missile's size, it's engineered to carry a low-yield nuclear warhead. That is a key point it's not built for wide-scale devastation but for battlefield-level deterrence. This alone makes the NASR a rare category of weapon in the modern military world, a tactical nuclear missile. Now let's talk about the philosophy behind it. The NASR was introduced as a response to India's Cold Start Doctrine India's military concept focused on rapid, limited conventional attacks without crossing the nuclear threshold. In simple terms, it was designed to give India an option to retaliate or take action swiftly in a conventional way without prompting full-scale nuclear war. Pakistan's answer was the NASR. Its purpose, blur the line between conventional and nuclear warfare by introducing the risk of battlefield nuclear use even in a limited conflict. That's why the NASR is so significant. It's not just a missile it's a deterrence tool. It tells the world that even short-range aggression could escalate quickly. Its mere existence is meant to discourage conventional military incursions by introducing immediate nuclear consequences. As we look closer at the launcher vehicle, one thing stands out it's fast and built for mobility. The launch system can be deployed and repositioned in minutes, making it harder to target and destroy in a first strike. This survivability increases its deterrent effect even further. Pakistan has tested it in a variety of scenarios, including full salvo launches, and repeatedly demonstrated its shoot and scoot capability. The development of the NASR also sends a broader message about military technology evolution in the region. The shift from large, long-range strategic weapons to small, precise, tactical ones reflects changing military doctrines. It's no longer just about destroying cities it's about controlling the battlefield with smaller but still extremely potent weapons. Let us talk about testing history. The first test of the NASR was conducted in April 2011. Since then, it has undergone multiple successful trials. These tests were designed not just to validate range and accuracy, 
but to show the world that this is a deployable, working platform. Pakistan's military officials have stated that the system is fully integrated into its command and control structures, ensuring centralized oversight and avoiding unauthorized use. The nuclear capability of the NASR has drawn attention from analysts around the world. Its limited range and small warhead size don't make it a city killer instead, they create a new kind of threat, one that raises the stakes for even small skirmishes. It's part of a shift toward nuclear doctrines that include tactical use, not just strategic second strikes. That's a very controversial area, because using even a small nuclear weapon could escalate into all-out nuclear war. Critics of the NASR argue that it lowers the nuclear threshold too far. By making nuclear weapons more usable, they worry that it increases the risk of actual use. On the other hand, supporters argue that it enhances deterrence by making any military adventure by an adversary incredibly risky. One important point is safety and control. Tactical nuclear weapons especially ones with short ranges must be tightly controlled to prevent accidents, misfires, or unauthorized launches. Pakistan has repeatedly emphasized that the NASR is under full national command authority oversight, with all necessary controls in place. From a geopolitical point of view, the existence of the NASR has added a new layer to South Asian deterrence dynamics. It has influenced how military planners on both sides of the border think about escalation and control. It has also prompted deeper conversations among global arms control experts about the dangers of tactical nuclear weapons in conflict zones. Now, wrapping this up what have we really unwrapped with the NASR missile it's not just a weapon. It's a strategic message. A battlefield shield, a political signal. It challenges conventional military thinking by adding nuclear consequences at the tactical level. It's also a reflection of how modern warfare is changing not just in South Asia, but globally. The NASR is small, mobile, and incredibly dangerous. And whether one agrees with its deployment or not, it has undeniably reshaped the nature of conflict deterrence in the region. So that's the full look inside and out of the NASR missile system? Let me know in the comments what you think, is this the future of nuclear deterrence or does it make the world more dangerous would other countries follow this path, or should tactical nuclear missiles be banned altogether dash dash? Let me know if you'd like this script translated into Urdu or Hindi, or need background music ideas for your video. Dhanyabayad.